Jesus says, Prepare for our wedding day, a bride fit for her king. May 10th, 2015, words from Jesus through Sister Claire, spoken by Jackie. Here is Ezekiel's vision. This morning I was eating breakfast and I saw the Lord in the Spirit getting dressed for a formal event. He was wearing black tuxedo pants and a white shirt with pearl buttons, a tux tie around his neck but not tied yet, wearing black socks and black dress shoes. One foot on a chair in front of a dresser with a mirror, trying to get his left cufflink snapped. There were other attendants around helping him. One was brushing out his tuxedo coat that hung from a dressing pole. He turned and looked at me with a sparkle in his eye and tilted his head with a knowing smile. What are you doing? I'm getting dressed. For what? For a wedding? Whose? Ours? I thought at first he was talking about the bride to church to take her to the wedding feast and I felt a little sad. I could tell he read my thought and I said, so it's just going to be a big gathering of the church, all of your brides. Oh no, don't worry, we will have our private wedding also as will I with each of my brides. There will be plenty of personal one-on-one -on -one time and beautiful lingering honeymoons for each of you with me. Don't try to understand it all. Just receive and enjoy this time we have together. I want you to focus all your thoughts and energy this week on our wedding. This is our wedding week, and I want nothing to hinder or blemish it in any way whatsoever. When negative or curious thoughts enter your mind, and in times of temptation. He made a waving gesture with his arm as he was brushing away those banal things. Use my name and I will sweep it all away. This is a week of perfection and preparation. You're going to be married soon. Enjoy the last minute details of preparing yourself. You're free to hope and dream all the things you've ever wanted in me. Protect this time. I want this to be a week of celebration. Our wedding week. My impression was that he wanted us to give ourselves permission to think and dream and imagine anything and everything that could ever be possible. And this would all be ours and more, more than we could ever comprehend. Claire continued. Then Jesus began speaking to me. I'm indeed dressing for this occasion. This is what I wanted to tell you last night, but I knew you wouldn't believe me, so I kept it to myself. That's why the tears. But we are over that now. I see you are believing me more than ever before, and I'm pleased with you, Claire. It won't be long now, my love. Don't try to translate that into earth time. Just take it at face value, okay? Okay, I'm feeling excited. I should hope so. This is the biggest day of your life. Should I be preparing a dress? I have already soon a most beautiful dress for you, but you could adorn yourself with kind deeds done out of love for me. These are wedding presents from you to me. 
He smiled. Now I see him with one foot up on a chair, tying the shoelace on his right foot. His left shoe is already on. Oh, Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. For what? I don't see anything to forgive. All I see is my faith-filled bride. Oh, how sweet. Well, it's true. I'm going to stay in that place with your help. I'm always helping you. Didn't you know that by now? Yes, several times while writing these words down, I was tempted to question and have doubts, but I shut them out of my mind the very minute they presented themselves. I said, no, I'm not going there. Leave. And they went away. I wish for my bride to spend this week adorning herself for this day that she has looked forward to for so long. Little things mean a lot. Wedding presents, being aware of what you can do as a parting gesture for those around you who do not believe. They will remember this week. They will remember how kind you were to them. And they will thank me for that. Lord, why do you keep giving me the church in Sardis? That's Revelation 3.1. Because there are many among you who are not taking my words with seriousness and gravity and living them to the fullest, I need you to repent for being lax and pay strict attention to what's going on in your hearts. Boot the world out. Out, out. Focus on me and our eternity together. Do not bring the world into this sacred space. Put all your doings with the world aside and give me all your available time. Make room for me by putting aside shopping, entertainments, idle conversations and curiosities. Much is going on in the world this week that is toxic to your souls. It will bring fear into your heart and mind. Oh, how I want you to approach the altar with pure love and expectation of all that I have for you. I want this to be a week of spiritual concentration on our nuptial vows. But if you feed on what Satan is brewing, you will miss it. Your mind will be cluttered and unfit to receive the graces I have in store for you. I will protect you, but you must do your part and shun those things that have nothing to do with eternity. My dear ones, it is not my intention to chastise. Rather, it is my intention to correct the course so you will arrive at the destination. Many are still far too preoccupied with what is going on in the world and their plans for this week. You are being tempted daily to veer off course. I must say you have done well to ignore those things that keep trying to snag your attention. Hold to my directions and put away everything that can be ignored and put aside. You will never regret it. And for the rest I say, tighten down the hatches and keep the world out. The seas are rough and foreboding. I do not want you lingering there. Stay close to me. Isolate yourself with me and keep the world out of your life as much as you possibly can. I'm calling for a week of devotion and drawing close to me. Dream your dreams about what you want to do in heaven. Dare to ask for the impossible and all the gifts you have ever wanted from me. Expect me to hear you and fulfill your every desire. Please, my bride, give me your all this week. Stay out of the news, stay out of the stores, stay off the internet, go into your prayer closets, pray and seek me above all else. 
This is my desire for you. Would you give this to me as a wedding present? I'm offering you the grace to accomplish all that I ask of you. If you love me, you will obey me. The Lord then spoke to Ezekiel. It is imperative that you absolutely and firmly discipline yourselves this week. Please, my faithful brides, stay away from browsing the internet. Put your curiosities to death. I need you to be preparing yourselves for the most important moment in your eternity. Press into me exclusively. My whole heart and mind, spirit and soul are preparing for our wedding day. Please, beloved, no more of the world. Stay out of the stores. This is not the time to purchase gifts for yourself or your loved ones. I need you to be clean for our wedding. Avoid television, radio, magazines and the newspapers. You have had a lifetime full of that. I have gone to great pains to purify you from those influences. Yes, my precious ones, do tend to your proper duties, children, work, etc. But only fulfill those obligations that are crucial for the good of another. For example, giving someone a ride to the doctor or errands of mercy for the sick, the poor and the elderly. You know what is absolutely necessary and what is not. I will help you and caution you as well as nudging you to act when needed. In human terms, one preparing for their wedding would be consumed with every detail of the wedding. Please do not be as the Church of Sardis, that I would have to come to you as a thief in the night. Strengthen now what is left. Abide in me and me alone. Let all of your thoughts and intentions be of me and for me. Offer each day and everything that it brings to me. I will sanctify it all, everything, even your struggles and failures. Give it all to me and I will make you holy, a bride fit for her king.